and I was shocked to find that the havens for learning that I envisioned where children's imaginations could run free and young people could find inspiration for their future and the legacy of knowledge accumulated by our civil society can be freely accessed have become a political battleground for a radical agenda pushed down by this Chicago organization, the American Library Association. When a state's literacy rates are in the bottom 10 in the nation, spending a lot of, of time and um, elected official capital on strict, strictly regulating libraries and librarians is not the, the wisest tactic. The bill is based, in large part, on the majority party's disagreement with the current ALA president's personal politics. That issue will be moot by the time SB 390 takes effect in July 2025. The ALA president serves a one-year term, and it will expire in July, the same month that this legislation would take effect. When the ALA saw an opportunity to get their message, not their original message that they had back in the 1800s, but the new message they adopted because of one thing, because they didn't like the Vietnam War, and as the war was winding down, they had to find a new message in order to continue raising funds. And their new message was a message of Marxism and a message of socialism. And they do what anything else does. They don't go in through the front door, they don't go in through the back door. They crack a window and they slowly start putting the poison into the house. Not where we want to go. Do, 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 you, do we want to actually plant seedlings across our state that you got to watch out for these evil librarians? You got to look at, you got you to worry about what books there are in there. You know, you really can't trust them. You know, maybe you don't even want to drop your kids off at the library. Uh, that should not be the direction that we're going in.